Yes. It's the kind green ape. Half war story. Half undiscovered species in the genus Homo. Yes, it was reported by soldiers in South Safra during the war. The kind green ape would visit bunkers during the night, healing wounded soldiers with its saliva. Indeed, there is. It's our closest relative among the cryptids. Same taxonomic family, different genus. Which is to say the kind green ape is a species with which we share a common ancestor and that evolved parallel to our own. Just like your partners. Ma'am, you are confusing him. Please don't misunderstand me, either of you. Human, as it is used in everyday speech, is hardly a taxonomic category. For all intents and purposes, you can be thought of as human. Though, Sahelites do have some distinguishing characteristics. Different advantages, if you will. Yes, advantages such as the flakier texture of Sahelite earwaxes, or so I've heard. Nothing inspires pride in one species quite like speculative evolutionary biology. Perhaps we've had enough of that for today. In everyday speech, human isn't really a scientific category. For all legal and ethical purposes, your partner is a person just like you, so you might as well think of him as being human too. What do you mean? Hmm. Some argue that the kind green ape should also be thought of as human, especially because it has shown itself to be so humane. I don't dare form an opinion one way or the other without more information, though. My husband did, but it's a shy creature and only shows itself to humans when it feels that it must intervene to save lives. No scientist has ever been able to track it down. It's so mysterious, I really can't tell you anything more about it. What's going on here? <sighs> Delinquents! The lieutenant squeezes the bridge of his nose. The light reflects off his glasses, giving him the appearance of a surgeon in the middle of a tense procedure. He's having trouble adjusting to the new reality before him. What's happening? Good for you. Rock on, then. What? What's harder core than a little bit of? Excuse me, what? This would be a good time to add some nerve damage to the mix. Pull the expression too. No, stop immediately. Stop dancing and apologize. He looks down, then at you. Dance? Yellow? Monkey fucker? Yes, if anything, the lieutenant feels tired. Like a man who's heard the same record one time too many. We are done! Then a breath of cold sea air fills the church as the lieutenant opens the door and steps out. It's colder outside than you were expecting. You see the lieutenant standing there, a small cloud of white escaping from his mouth. He turns to you, but says nothing. He's waiting to see what you do. For God's sake, say you fucked up, please. Detective. There won't be any preamble chit-chat this time. Get to the point. You think? Yes. And? The lieutenant stares impassively. Let me ask you something. What do you see when you look at me? That's what you are supposed to say, of course. But do you know what you didn't say? 
rêva Sholien. I don't suppose anyone ever questions whether you belong here. Whatever your faults, you're a solid detective. You're obviously Reva Sholien. I was born here. I grew up here. It's the only home I've ever known. And there's a good chance I'll die in the line of duty here, too. But to most of my countrymen, I will always be some monkey fucker. <clears throat> The lieutenant's not comfortable with emotional openness. He's eager to change the subject. Well, good, because we are partners. Now, I have some personal matters I'd like to get in order. If you don't object, I'm going to leave the rest of the day's investigation to you. Try not to break anything while I'm gone. I'll see you in the morning, detective. You think? You know, Harry, one of your problems is that nothing ever seems to be your fault. Have you noticed that? He is your half-brother, and you're driving him away. For what? Detective. There won't be any preamble chit-chat this time. Get to the point. What's my problem? You're a real piece of work, Harry. You know that? He is your half-brother, and you're driving him away. For what? Apologizing would be a good start. Maybe it really isn't your fault. You might just be an irretrievable human catastrophe. Which I guess makes me the idiot for hoping you could be better. I mean, look at yourself. Yes, look at yourself. What do you see? So that's it. You don't even want to change. I just don't understand. We had been making real progress towards solving the case. But now I'm afraid I just can't trust you. Stop! Stop! You won't even call me by my actual title. It's always Kim this, Kim that. Has it even occurred to you how disrespectful that is? What good times. If they don't mean anything, why do you say them? But see, you can't, or you just refuse to. Not that the difference really matters. The lieutenant goes silent for a moment. He has the upright bearing of a king's headsman waiting to carry out the crown's sentence. He's been anticipating this moment for some time. Still, it doesn't make it any easier for him to say. For the sake of the investigation, I'll stay. You hear that? The lieutenant's staying. Brotherhood conquers all. No, you fucking asshole. This isn't a game, and you are not the hero. You don't get infinite chances to do the right thing. That's not how the world works. I'm staying because I have to protect the investigation from you. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have some other matters to attend to. We'll meet again as usual in the morning. And, detective, don't fuck anything else up while I'm away.